Your Life, the program for all America, brought to you by Gentle Joy, the dishwashing liquid that gentles your hands, the liquid that's made to be mild three times a day, and Liquid Prell, the shampoo that's extra rich to drench your hair in luxury. And now, here he is, Mr. This Is Your Life himself, Ralph Edwards. Thank you, Bob Warren. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. There are in the entertainment world some people with a rare inner magic that completely bewitches an audience. Tonight's principal subject has so much of this quality of enchantment, so much personality, that for more than 40 years he's been a headliner. There he is in a studio rehearsing one of his numbers that's a trademark. His interpretation of me and my shadow. To many, many millions of you, this has been a familiar and captivating sight. Now let's go in and surprise this well-known entertainer. Ralph Edwards. Hello, Hello Ted. How Ralph, are you? How are and right you? now we're on television coast to coast. As I say to you, famous as the king of jazz, the Pied Piper of happiness, the high-hatted tragedian of song, Ted Lewis, tonight this is your life. <laughs> thought you were rehearsing for a television pilot film that would uh, show off your talent, right, Ted? Why, certainly I Well, did. you are, you are. Have you I'm never said the word? Well, he didn't know. <laughs> I'm sure you'll reach a much greater television audience with the unfolding of your fascinating life story tonight. Eddie Chester, Eddie, thank you. You were the original Shadow in yes. Ted's Me and My Shadow number back in 1927, and you've been Ted Shadow for many years. This is a complete surprise to you, too, Eddie, isn't it? There is. Well, thank you, Eddie, and thanks, pianist Lee Berger. Thank you, Lee, and Johnny Dugan, old pal Johnny, for all your help over there to get Ted Lewis here tonight. Why? You didn't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> Ted Lewis. I'm flabbergasted. Will you please accompany me to our This Is Your Life studio and go back with us through your years as a perennially popular showman whose battered hat, twirling opera stick, dancing hands, and syncopated clarinet have made you a show business legend. While we're on our way, here's Bob Warren with a word about joy. Go on, Ted. Here's a... Friends here, I got there. Anybody can friend me on it. When my baby smiles at me, that's your theme song, Ted Lewis. There's a happy question that you always uh, ask. Now, how does it go? Is, is everybody happy? That's the one I wanted to hear. <laughs> I'm sure we all are. Ted, where were you born? I was born in a wonderful town called Circleville, Ohio. You're very proud of your hometown, Certainly and you always mention it during your performances. Come on, sit over here on the bench, will you, Ted? And let's imagine that we're in the park in Circleville, Ohio, named in your honor the Ted Lewis Park, right? <laughs> if you please, right here. Here, Ted. June 6th. 1892 is an especially happy day for the Friedman family of Circleville in Pickaway County, Ohio, because a second son is born to Pauline and Benjamin Friedman. They name him Theodore Leopold Friedman. That's you, Ted, right? Your parents, with their ladies' ready-to-wear store, are the most prominent merchants in this town of 5,000. That is 5,000 in 1892. What was the name of their store, Ted? Friedman's Bazaar. Yes. And uh, look uh, around behind you, there it is, Ted. Friedman's Bazaar with the very latest in ladies' top hats. <laughs> but the ladies' ready-to-wear business is never to wear well with you, Ted. And as you grow into boyhood, you become captivated by music and show business. That was you on the left, by the way, over there. 
Then a man named Oscar Ummeringer comes to town, starts a boys' band, the Circleville Cadets Band. There were about 30 boys in that band, and for 25 cents a week, Mr. Ummeringer gave us music lessons. Remember, Ted? Yes, sir, Ted. Your brother, Edgar, now connected with Holmes and Narver Engineering. Here he is from Beverly Hills, California, Edgar Friedman. <laughs> Ted, uh, what instrument did you play uh, when you and your brother Edgar here were with this boys' band? Well, I started on the piccolo. Yeah. Then uh, an E-flat clarinet. Yeah. Why the uh, piccolo? My fingers weren't long enough. <laughs> the cadet band marched in the parade at the first Circleville Pumpkin Show. Isn't that right, Edgar? Yes, the Pumpkin Show was the annual event in Circleville, and it was at that first big annual Pumpkin Show that Ted played the Dance of the Seven Veils for the uh, Hoochie Coochie Dancers. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened, Ted, when your father discovered you were playing the accompaniment for this uh, dance artiste? Well, I... <laughs> <laughs> Pulled you out, didn't he? Yes, he did. Uh -huh. He felt show business wasn't really too good in those days. Right. And Ted, here are your three younger brothers who can give us more information. <laughs> inside information about your early attempts to get into show business. From New York, where he is now in the advertising agency business, here is Leon Friedman. Oh. And from, where are you, Leon? From Columbus, Ohio, with Roy Jewelers there, Milton, and from radio station WCOL Columbus, brother Max Friedman. Here they are. Come on, boys, out here. Bring him out here. Come on, Ted. Step in the middle of your two brothers here. Max, you get on this side of Ted, and we'll all talk. All right. It's been 21 years right. since the right. five of you all have been together. I was rehearsing for a... <laughs> <laughs> was rehearsing for an amateur show. Up. <laughs> you, uh, that was just rehearsal. This is for real, Ted. And believe me, the, uh, uh, you don't need a pilot or anything for your wonderful artistry. Uh, tell us more about this yen for show business that uh, Ted had when he was a boy, Leon. Well, whenever a show of any kind came to town, Ted would some way or other wiggle himself right into it. Very much against my father's wishes, of course. If it was a minstrel show, there would be Ted coming right down the main street carrying a banner right in front of the band, right past my father's store. He really loved show business. <laughs> I'll never forget. When Uncle Tom's cabin came to town, Ted used to lead the bloodhounds, the, uh, yeah, the bloodhounds, were they? Yeah, bloodhounds in the parade, yeah. In the parade, and right past Only they were Great Danes. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, do you remember when you were about 14 years old, between vacation time, you were a barker with a wild show called Wild Rose? Yeah, Wild Rosie. Wild Rosie. What was the spiel you used well, to use, Ted, that uh, the customers <laughs> were lured into Wild Rosie? How'd it go? Well, I used to ballyhoo with my little E-flat clarinet. Then I sold the tickets. Yeah. Then I came in, and they, we had this boy, my name was Schisler from Circleville, Ohio, in the pit. We had an old wig on him, a ravelly wig, and we had raw bones and everything. <laughs> <back>. <laughs> And we had him all bronzed up with uh, some kind of paint. I don't remember what it was. Mm -hmm. But I would make a spiel about him. I'd say, he neither walks nor talks, but he makes his once known by signs, grunts, and groans. <laughs> <laughs> well, you and your brother, Ted, can keep on talking about old times later at the party, in your honor, at the Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel, where all your friends have been staying from out of town. Thank you, Edgar, Leon, Milton, and Max Friedman. You'll see brother a little later. <laughs> In 1905, when you're still in your early teens, Ted, you and your brother Edgar put together a little act that includes music and jokes. During the summer vacation, you're booked on the old Gus Son vaudeville circuit. Ted and Ed, the musical twins. Ted and Ed, musical twins. What was we your salary? played cornet and I played clarinet. Mm -hmm. We got $22.50 a week apiece. Yeah. That's when we worked. <laughs> and that covered expenses, That's too. Right. You like show business, Ted. But your father is determined to make a businessman out of you. So when you leave Everett's high school, he sends you to Bliss Business College in nearby Columbus, Ohio. But Ted, you were so in love with show business, you didn't attend Bliss Business College very long. An old schoolmate of yours, Ted. He's now a representative in the Ohio State Legislature here from Circleville, Representative Ed Wallace. How are you? <laughs> How are you? 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 How are you
Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Now, uh, you said uh, Ted didn't attend Bliss Business College for long. Ed Wallace, how come? I, uh, Ted uh, was very happy spending most of his time at Cricker, Cricket Smith's barber shop, mm -hmm. where the barbers would play the banjo and the mandolin. And there's where Ted got his idea of these jazz notes. Yes. You'd also uh, do background whistling, wouldn't you, for the band that played in the park in Columbus? Well, uh, yes, I did a lot Could of that. Could you give a little sample of that? Meyer's band. Yeah, how did the whistling go? <laughs> Very good. <laughs> thank you, Ted, and thank you, Representative Ed Wallace. Right. Yes, I'm yes. very happy to see yes. you. My father sold him his bakery shop. Your father sold he him his bakery shop. building. Well, what do you know? Yeah, and he still has it, and uh, he's doing very wonderful. He's a state representative, and I know he's been re-elected. I haven't asked him yet, but I'm positive. <laughs> he's a mighty fine fellow. When your father discovers you're not attending college, Ted, it's back to Friedman's Bazaar for you. What were your chores in your parents' store? Well, he called up one day at the Bliss College and asked for me to, uh, he wanted me to bring something home from Columbus. Mm -hmm. And he told him, he said, well, Mr. Friedman, your boy hasn't been here for two weeks. So when I came home that night, he asked me how I was getting along in school. I told him, fine. He said, come back in the office, I want to talk to you. <laughs> so I got it good that night. That was my last days of school. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, I I had to sweep out the store with my uncle Simon in the in the mornings. You weren't permitted then to wait on the customers. Why? Well, the customers wouldn't let me. You see, we had all ladies ready to wear. Oh. And if a lady came in for a pair of stockings or a corset or something like on that order, she'd want to see one of the lady clerks. Naturally. And the best I could do was sweep out the store and deliver packages. <laughs> Frustrated, <laughs> you wire Gus Sun for a vaudeville booking, and you get it. Yeah. You're not an immediate hit. So pretty soon it's back to ladies' hats and corsets in Friedman's Bazaar in Circleville, Ohio. Your dad just won't give up. Circleville to Vaudeville and back is your story for the next few years. In 1912, you team up with a singer named Jack Lewis That's and right. play a Vaudeville circuit in the South. What circuit was that, Ted? The Muck and Fuss Circuit. In <laughs> Greenville, North Carolina, you acquire your present name. How? That's right. How did you do that? Well, there wasn't room enough on the marquee for Lewis and Friedman. <laughs> so when I came in, they changed it to Lewis and Lewis. They had Lewis and Lewis, and I've kept it ever since. And just how one half of that billing, Ted Lewis, the refugee from a ladies' ready-to-wear store, becomes one of the greatest entertainers of our time, we'll learn in a few moments. But right now, a word from... Thank you very much. You know what Ted's been doing? He's been telling me about, he says, I got a subject for This Your Life. I've been trying to get to you to tell you this. Are you enjoying it? Oh, I think this is just marvelous. Okay, Ted. What, what a, I never had such a surprise in my life. Back to This Is Your Life, Ted Lewis, international musical star who has never forgotten his hometown, Circleville, Ohio. Turn around again, Ted, right back there. See, there's a familiar Circleville oh. landmark, the old courthouse. But in the summer of 1915, Ted, you're far from home, performing in a musical review, Parisian Flirt. In the same show as a pretty young dancer named Ada Baker. And within six weeks of meeting her on October 7th, 1915, you and Ada are married in Rochester, New York. And here is the lovely Ada, Mrs. Ted Lewis. Bless you. He asked me a moment ago if you knew about this, and I said, I had to tell him you knew about it, but you kept the secret. Why don't you sit on that side of Ted over there? You were married three times, weren't you, Ada? Yes, we were, in fact. All the, every time to Ted. I want to oh point yes, that out. definitely so. <laughs> we were married at noon in the city hall, and then between shows, we were mar had a religious ceremony, and that night, on stage, we were married again for the third time. Yes. She keeps the secret pretty good. Well, that was commercial, the one on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Three ceremonies in one day. No wonder your marriage has already lasted 43 years. In 1916, you get a band together called Ted Lewis and his Nut Band. And in 1917, on your way up, you're featured at the Oak Caprice, a club on top of Bastanabe's famous New York restaurant. Then, Ted, you got an offer to appear at another famous restaurant, Rectus. He played trumpet with your original band at Rector's, Ted, in 1917. Here from Redwood City, California, is Walter Kahn. Oh, oh Walter! Oh, 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 
Walter, uh, why did Rector's Restaurant particularly want Ted at this time? Well, because rest Rector's big rival, Weber's Restaurant, had a very successful Dixieland jazz band, and Rector's wanted Ted as competition. He was such a tremendous hit with his clarinet, saxophone, and his way of talking, a song, that in a few weeks he became known as the king of jazz. Now at last your father is proud of your success, Ted. And while you're at Rector's, you acquire your famous plug hat. Where'd you get that hat, Ted? From an old ex-prize fighter by the name of Mississippi, who uh, had a handsome cab stand out in front of Rector's. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of them in those days. Yeah. They'd take the lovers through the park, you know. Still do. And uh, <laughs> this Mississippi, the late Damon Runyon, wrote a long column about him. And uh, incidentally, he was a very dear friend of ours. Yes. And this Mississippi, uh, between uh, numbers, I'd get, we'd go downstairs, you know, out in the open air. And uh, we got very intimate with Mississippi and the rest of the boys down there. Mississippi was a little short of money, loot. <laughs> so he had a pair of dice in his pocket. And I said, well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll shoot you a quarter against your old high hat. So he said, okay. And he shot the dice and two sixes. That's crap. <laughs> that means that you lose. You, I win. <laughs> I gave him the quarter, took the hat, and went upstairs, and that's what uh, I did. It was the time everyone was gloomy. <laughs> that time. And that's when you started your famous phrase, is everybody happy. That's right. And you were there that night I when he did so that. Well. Thank you, Walter Kahn, an original thank member thank you, thank of you, the uh, jazz band, Ted Lewis's jazz band, and now co-owner of the Hilo Club in Atherton, California. Wonderful. During World War I, as is later true in World War II, uh, you and your band plays in hospitals and camps all over the country and sell a large amount of bonds. Now greatly in demand, you make recordings, a number of which sell in the millions, including Tiger Rag, made in 1918, which sells five and a half million records. And in 1919, you star in three different New York shows at one and the same time. Greenwich Village Follies, the Siegfried, uh, uh, Siegfeld, Siegfeld uh, Midnight uh, Frolics, Roof. Uh, and uh, the Palace Theater, a real rarity in show business. Three, three shows, one time. And in 1920, you collaborate in writing your theme song, When My Baby Smiles at Me. And later, you popularize Three O'Clock in the Morning. But then in 1923, when you produce your own review, the Ted Lewis Frolics, what happened? <laughs> Went Mahula. <laughs> you lost your shirt, right? Kaput. <laughs> what did uh, Ted do then, Ada? Well, he decided after that that I had best become his manager. Yes, and you've said, Ted, you never made a smarter move. Your success right. mounts through the 1920s and 30s, both here and abroad, but it doesn't change the Ted Lewis that your hometown loves and admires. Ted's uh, loyalty to his family and friends has always been unshakable. Uh, hasn't it, Milton? Yes, it has, Ralph. When our father passed away in 1922, Ted wanted Mother to quit and retire from business. Mother refused because, at the time, she had several elderly ladies on the payroll, and she was afraid at this time it would be hard for them to secure other employment. Mother didn't want to go out of uh, business on account of these people not having a way of getting along. Ted made a promise to our mother that if she would go out of business, he would see that these ladies received their entire pay for the rest of their life. Ted has kept that promise. And when the cost of living advanced, their monthly salary was advanced along with it. Thanks, Max. Milton. In 1938, Ted, your mother passes away, and as the years go on, you continue to star at the top spots in the country. In 1947, you're at the Chez Paris in Chicago. And that's where I really made my nightclub debut, isn't it, Mr. Lewis? His father played piano in your band at the time, Ted, and this young man flew here from New York to be with you tonight. Here he is himself, a former great principal subject on This Your Life, Tommy Sands. Here he is. <laughs> Tommy, uh, what's this about a, a night? Club uh, debut at Chez Paris? Well, when I was about nine years old, Mr. Lewis asked me if I'd bring my guitar out on the stage of the Chez Paris and do a number for the audience. And I did. And I remember that when I got through, 
you said some wonderful things to me about the people, you know, or rather to the people about me. And it was the first time that, that any big star had ever, you know, gone out of his way to be nice to me. And it made a wonderful impression. And well, I just you want were you to a very know. sweet boy, and I'm very happy about your success. Thank yeah, you. you'll be happy to know, Ted, that Tommy, now a big star in his own right, makes his official nightclub debut next month. And he'll be playing at some of the famous, fam uh, same famous clubs where you've appeared. Thank you very much there. Tommy Sands, thank you very much, Tommy. 1952, Ted, you give your greatest demonstration of the showmanship for which you are justly famous. While playing at the Skyway Lounge in Cleveland, Ohio, you're sent to the hospital suffering from a severe ulcer attack. And here to tell us what you did then is Saul Klein, who for 30 years was associated oh. with you as musician, conductor, and company manager. Here's Saul Klein. What did uh, Ted do in this emergency, Sal? Well, while he was at the hospital, he had a man come up with a recording machine and he recorded his whole show that he does on the record. Mm -hmm. That night, we opened the show in a black spot, a black, uh, and the spotlight hit a microphone with the hat showing. That mm -hmm. was it. And he opened the show with his recorded voice and a spotlight went all around the room following his recorded voice doing a save show, and we had the newspapers, and it was sensational. No Believe wonder me. you're known as one of the greatest showmen in the business, Ted. Thank you, Saul Klein. You'll see Ted a little later. <laughs> is everybody happy? This is more than just a phrase to you, Ted. How you've actually brought happiness to so many people besides your audiences, we'll learn in just a moment. Right now, let's listen to a word about Zest. Ted, you measure success not in acclaim, but in human values. As the mayor of your hometown can testify, here he is, his honor, Ben Gordon of Circleville, Ohio. We in Circleville are proud of Ted Lewis and grateful to you. Ralph, he has contributed and raised considerable money for the purchase of land that we named Ted Lewis Park, a 13-acre recreation area. He and Ada has given considerable money to support and equip the Burger Hospital in Circleville. <coughs> he buys instruments for the high school band. Ralph, <coughs> Ralph, every uh, June, 6th, June the 6th, that's yeah, right. Uh, on Ted's birthday, our high school is given a holiday. He <laughs> makes everybody happy. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Ben Gordon of Circleville, Ohio. We know you'll want to relive this occasion, Ted, so Joy has for you tonight a film of the program of this 16 millimeter Bell and Howell sound projector to show it on, as well as a Bell and Howell 16 millimeter electric eye movie camera. Along with your many philanthropies, Ted, we know that you and Ada are two of the principal supporters of Camp Williams for underprivileged children at Suffer, New York. We know, too, that you're about to purchase furniture, which is badly needed for the meeting room at Camp Williams. Well, you can forget about that, Ted, because Joy is presenting to Camp Williams, in your name, $1,000 worth of Ames Air furniture, perfect for the camp children because it's built by craftsmen to weather the roughest wear. And for you, Ada, we have this gold charm bracelet created by Marshall Jewelers of New York City. Ted, you were invited a few weeks ago to go to Columbus, Ohio to receive an important governor's award from Governor Michael V. DeSalle, but you were performing, unable to attend. Well, here, speaking to you from the state capitol, in Ohio is the governor. Now listen. Ted, this is Mike DeSalle. I'm sorry that the press of business in Columbus makes it impossible for me to be with you tonight to present the award in person. In my stead, I'm sending Jack Bush, the Director of Commerce. I want to wish you well for future success the rest of your life. Mr. John W. Bush, Jack Bush. <laughs> Ted, every year, seven or eight uh, outstanding Ohioans receive the Governor's Award uh, for success in their field. And for the prominence that you have achieved in the field of entertainment, I want to present for Mike DeSalle the plaque for 1958, and this is the highest honor the state of Ohio can give you. Thank you, John W. Bush, and thank you, Governor Michael B. DeSalle of Ohio. On stage, Ted Lewis, you've been followed by your shadow for 32 years. On stage and off, we're all of us your shadows. Following you, applauding you, and responding to you as you say, what do you say is... Is everybody happy? happy? This is your life, I'm Ted happy. Lewis. Good night. God bless you. Thank you. <laughs> Our out-of-town guests have flown to Hollywood via TWA's luxurious jet stream non-stop service coast to coast and overseas. Fly the finest. Fly TWA jet stream service. 
This Is Your Life has been brought to you tonight by Zest, the delightfully different, wonderfully mild bath and beauty bar that makes you feel really clean, and Liquid Prell, the shampoo that's extra rich to drench your hair in luxury. Next week on This Is Your Life, you'll meet a person who played a major role with equal skill in a world-shaking revolution and an in international intrigue. Be with us then. Good night. Thank you. Good night. This Is Your Life is a Ralph Edwards production. Produced by Axel Grunberg and directed by Richard Gottlieb. Be sure to watch Loretta Young on most of these same stations every Sunday night.